I'm sure that you are all waiting with bated breath about the newest news when it comes to Ilhan Omar, because this is actually not a recent happening, but it is recent that it actually surfaced, because apparently this is an old interview, but somehow nobody saw it, probably because it was on Al Jazeera. And so there, we actually do have new vid video that uh, hasn't really been making the media rounds until just the other day about Ilhan Omar. So we'll go ahead and, and watch that. A lot of conservatives in particular would say that the rise in Islamophobia is a result not of hate, but of fear, a legitimate fear, they say, of quote-unquote jihadist terrorism, whether it's Fort Hood or San Bernardino or the recent truck attack in New York. Uh, what do you say to them? I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. We should be uh, profiling, monitoring um, and, uh, and, and creating policies to fight the radicalization of white men. Well, there you have it. The problem of terrorism, just like everything else, the real problem is white men. It, it's hilarious that no matter what the problem is, no matter what uh, different angle that you can take it on, it's always the white man's fault. And this is sort of the, the philosophical basis of most of Ilhan Omar's beliefs. I mean, she's a Democrat socialist Muslim, so yeah, they pretty much assume that if there's a problem in the world, it's probably a straight white Christian man's fault. I mean, that's pretty much how it goes, right? So this is the assertion that she has come up with. But the thing is, it's completely wrong. And we actually did this research and disproved this back in November when Don Lemon said essentially exactly the same thing. That when it came to terrorism, it makes no sense to, make, uh, to be afraid of Muslims because the real terrorist threat is white men. White men are the ones per perpetrating most of the terrorism in this country. But if you look at the research, that's actually completely untrue. And we talked about this back then as well. So just to uh, show you this graphic. So this is all research that was done by uh, FBI Crime Statistics. This is where I'm getting my information. And I went back 30 years, and you'll notice that I broke each of these down by race. And then that last chart there at the bottom, that is the whole thing from 1990 to the present. And so if you'll look at those totals, what that shows is, if you're looking at the percentage of the attacks, the ones perpetrated by Arabs in that 30-year period, or almost 30-year period, that there were 44 attacks by Arabs, and 47 by white people. So that constitutes 44% versus 47%. So technically, white people are committing more acts of terror in the past 30 years than Arabs have. But there's something else you need to be aware of too. Look right next to that at the number of deaths and the percentage of deaths. Even though white people have perpetrated three more acts of terrorism than Arab people, if you're looking at the dead, there's way more deaths when it comes to Arab versus white. The Arabs have 92% of the deaths and 88% of the injuries of all terrorist attacks combined in the past 30 years. And that's even more significant when you consider that if the population of the United States White people make up 76.6% of the American population. Arabs make up 0.01%. Which means if you're looking at your terrorism per, per capita, per million, that for every million people, 0.1 is a white person, which means you would actually have to look at 10 million white people to find one terrorist among them. With Muslims, it's 12 per million. So many, many times the rate of white people. And just so you know, looking at this data, I counted each individual event, even if they had the same attacker. And the reason that that's significant is that in the, the ones that I looked up, 
you're less likely to have a Muslim commit more than one terror attack because typically what they do at the end of it is that they commit suicide. So I gave the, the Arabs, the Muslims, every advantage in this. I gave them every benefit of the doubt, every advantage, because I counted each individual event, even if they had the same attacker. I also did not count terrorists killing themselves in the death toll. So again, not even using that to bolster the, the numbers of deaths. And yet, I still found that Arabs are over 64 times more likely to engage in terrorism than any other race. And what you might say there is, well, yeah, Caleb, but the thing is, 9-11 will skew the numbers. Throwing 9-11 in makes it look worse than it is. Now, granted, 9-11 is a big deal. But even if you take 9-11 away, look at the 2010 to the present chart that's there right above the, the total one. Even in an era where 9-11 did not take place the past nine years, 51% of the attacks were still committed by Arabs. The only reason that they look comparable on the 30-year chart is because you're counting the 1990s, where there were significantly less. Since the year 2000, Arabs have been responsible for more terrorist attacks, more deaths, and more injuries. And all of this, considering they are a much, 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 much smaller part of the population than white people. And... Attacks by Arabs cause 13 times more deaths and 8.1 times more injuries than attacks by whites. There's just no comparison. There's just not. The numbers do not bear that out. They don't even come close. And that's even more astounding when you consider how much larger a population white people are in this country versus Arabs, and Arabs are still committing more acts of terror in the past 18 years. But even though that is all true, and Ilhan Omar could not be further away from the truth, that she is completely, systematically wrong on every conceivable level, even though that is true, I don't even think that's the most significant part of this. Because it really shows the kind of person Ilhan Omar is. You'll notice that her response is not, I don't think that people should be afraid of Muslims. Or, I don't think that we should be doing racial profiling. Which, by the way, I'm sympathetic to that argument. I don't want somebody stopped and checked or searched just because they happen to be of one religion or one race. I don't think that that's, that's right. Now, I do think that we overcorrected in worrying about that a little too much to where you were less likely to get searched if you were a Arab or you were a person of the Muslim faith because they were so afraid of being accused of racial profiling that they wouldn't check those people. Now, that was an overcorrection on our part, and that was a mistake. That was one of the big mistakes of the Bush administration. But nonetheless, if, if you just came at it from the argument of, I don't want a person stopped and checked or, or having you know extra scrutiny placed on them because of their race, because of their religion, totally understand that. That's not what Ilhan Omar did. The first words out of her mouth were, people should really fear white men. And then a little later in the interview, you saw her also say that we need to profile them. This is nothing but tribalist nonsense. You see, and this is the problem with things like slavery reparations, for example, or uh, any kind of discrimination. Look, the, the intended goal should be Let's just treat everybody equally. Let's treat everybody the same. If there is one race that is discriminating against another, let's work to end that. That's not what the left wants anymore. They want vengeance. They want specifically to tear down another race to build another one up. She didn't say, let's just not profile people based on their race. She's saying, oh no, we need to profile. We just need to profile white people. It's it's in, an incredibly barbaric philosophy. They did it to us, so we're going to do it to them now. It's our time. A long time ago, white people oppressed black people, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the tables on them. Well, for a long time, men have been oppressing women, so now we're going to have women oppress men. We're going to have extra rights that they don't get to have. 
people are going to believe us and not believe them. As opposed to the way that it used to be where people would believe the man and not the woman. Well, that happened in the past, so now the solution to that is we're going to get privileges over them. We're going to get special treatment over them. That's not the way this works. The spirit of reconciliation is that you come together and you end the bad treatment. Not, we get to do the bad treatment to you this time. That would be like if you're looking at two siblings that are in some kind of fight and say, Mom, he hit me, so I'm going to hit him back now. That'll make it fair. No. The solution is for nobody to hit anybody. But the solution to that is now that the solution to that is not now, okay, well, now let's do it back to them. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.